In James 4, we get still more advice on how to draw close to God and how to live out our lives as Christians. He says, you want what you don't have, so you scheme and you kill to get it. You're jealous of what others have, but you can't get it, so you fight and wage war to take it away from them. And yet you don't have what you want because you don't ask God for it. Now, he's obviously talking about some of the dysfunction in probably the early church that he's already witnessed as one of its leaders. And he's saying, guys, quit squabbling and that sort of thing and just trust in God. Trust in God to provide for your needs. As we scroll down, he says in verse 5, do you think the scriptures have no meaning? They say that God is passionate, that the spirit he has placed within us should be faithful to him. Remember, the Bible teaches, Jesus taught it, Paul taught it, James understood it, that Christians have the Holy Spirit, who's God himself, living in them. And what James is teaching here is that God is passionate that the Spirit in us should be faithful to him, that we should live our lives in accordance with the moving and the direction of the Holy Spirit in us, so we should be obedient, right? And so he says this, So humble yourselves before God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Come close to God, and God will come close to you. Wash your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, for your loyalty is divided between God and the world. Boy, that's a great passage to read a couple of times and really allow it to sink in and apply it to your own life today. As we scroll down, he says this, Don't speak evil against each other, dear brothers and sisters. If you criticize and judge each other, then you're criticizing and judging God's law. But your job is to obey the law, not to judge whether it applies to you. Boy, that's a great message for every Christian to listen to and apply to their lives today. And then he warns them about self-confidence. And he says this at the very end. Remember, it is sin to know what you ought to do and then not do it. So again, a lot of challenging remarks from James a leader in the early church, speaking to Christians and making sure that they understand that they shouldn't use grace in their life as a license to sin. So you're ready to read James chapter 4, and we'll see you tomorrow for chapter 5, the last chapter in the book of James.